Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to give, uh, we're at the top of the hour. We're going to give everyone just a couple of minutes and start here at uh, 11.02 Mountain Time. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending upon where you're joining us from around the globe. This is Robert Leake, Director of Marketing here at eFolder Axiant, and I'd like to welcome you to our most recent episode of MSP Ignition, Qualifying Business Opportunities. And I'm really excited about uh, everyone joining us for today's conversation. Uh, we continue to build on the sales enablement track uh, as it relates to um, MSPs and, and really providing you the ability to truly sell your business the right way. If you joined us in January, you were a part of the, you know, selling the real value of your MSP conversation. And then in February, we talked about surfacing those opportunities and igniting sales for the business. I uh, definitely recommend you go and checking those out if you weren't able to join us for those. Um, but I thought it was a nice lead in as we think about, again, qualifying business opportunities today. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we are recording today's session. And uh, if you have any questions, please please feel free to pop them into your GoToWebinar panel there on your screen. We'll certainly be taking questions throughout and, and addressing any outstanding Q&A at the end. We'll be sending over uh, as well some follow-up emails uh, that will have the webinar recording, the deck, and the content piece that you can also download from the GoToWebinar panel as well, and we'll be talking to that shortly. Um, today with me, I'm, I'm joined by our host of MSP Ignition, Tom Watson former uh, MSP owner and current eFolder director of MSP Best Practices. Tom, how are you doing today? Thanks, Robert. Uh, looking forward to this and uh, the work we've done with Scott Kaplan. And I think it's going to be a great webinar, going to give a lot of good information out there to people on how to qualify those leads and prospects. Yes, indeed. And uh, speaking of Scott, Scott's on the line with us as well, K1 Practice Director for Sales Enablement and Training. Scott, how are you, sir? I'm super. Hello, everyone. Wonderful. Um, and before we dive too far deep into our qualification topic, I do want to make sure that everyone's familiar with us here at eFolder. Uh, run through uh, just uh, you know our suite of solutions. We feel very confident that we're bringing the IT channel's most powerful suite of data protection solutions to the market. And whether you're you know engaged with us on our backup solution, which was the original product that the company was built upon, or really you know as you explore our suite, you can see that we've strategically invested. And, and bringing layers of data protection to the MSP and your clients. We have file sync and share within our anchor product that is so much more because it not only is it file sync and share, brandable, really gives you the tools to stay in front of your clients, but it's really uh, embedded security insurance against malware and things of that nature that allows your clients to even take advantage of some of those issues. We also have Cloud Finder, a cloud to cloud backup solution, uh, really providing that revenue stream as well as margin on top of those Office 365 licenses and providing insurance and the ability to protect the data in the Office cloud for email, contacts, calendars, and uh, most recently SharePoint, which we're really excited to, uh, to talk about. And then lastly, and, and what's quickly becoming the foundation and almost flagship products of, of eFolders, our BDR. Uh, we have two different flavors, both in Replibit. It's a change-free solution that we feel um, actually not feel, we're hearing from our partners that it cuts out 75% of the operational time and requirements um, in running the BDR side of the business. And then as well, Axiom, 
uh, it's the most recent addition to our family of suite of solutions and is a BDR that really applies to your clients if dollars mean minutes and business continuity is a serious consideration on their side of the house. Axiant BRC brings the ability to click to restore and have their business up and running in the cloud instantaneously. As you can see here, it covers all different types of recovery. Um, and I think between you know, all of our suites of solutions and ideally the layers that we provide, I think that we could offer a lot to your business as, as an MSP. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about sales enablement. Tom, I'll uh, turn the microphone over to you if you want to kick us off, sir. Yeah. Um, as a part of this program, working with Scott, we have a whole sales enablement program. And what we're looking at here is monthly sales training. I believe now we're on our fourth one. Is that right? I believe so. And our goals here, as we have on the board, are to grow your business. We want to help your team also give you things to take to your team and help you focus on sales skills. So what we do is, I think it's great. We have Scott Kaplan come in, and he's bringing some of us the theory and methodology that he works from, and then I try to give you some of the color on what you do out there and what, when I ran my MSP, what worked for me, how I built it up, because I did build enough sales up that I was able to sell the company, and that was based on my ability to go out there and sell our suite of services. And as we're doing this, we do encourage feedback. We don't have a live mic for you, but what we do have is you can enter your questions in, and we will certainly get to them throughout if they're pertinent to a certain slide or at the end. All right, wonderful. And we also have some resources. We have a takeaway that is going to include a number of helpful items, including top qualifying questions and another piece to it as well. Yeah, so we'll be talking about that in just a moment. So thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Um, Scott, if you wouldn't mind, I know we're going to be talking about, you know, a lot of things strategically, methodology here. Would you mind running yeah. us through a little bit about what we will be covering today? Yeah, thank, thanks Robert and, and Tom. So today what we really wanted to, to bring to you was a, a clear understanding of what we call the qualification process. So how do you do this initial upfront, the first type of you know, interaction that you have, how do you really qualify? And then knowing that we're doing this initial qualification, trying to break it down into three distinctive buckets. And so that you could think about three key things that you'd want to go out there and qualify. So the first one is the account, the company, the business, whatever you want to go out there and, and call it. But what do we want to qualify? What do we want to know at a high level about that account to know if this is something that we should invest time, money, resources, focus or not? Um, and then you take that through, not just at the account level, but what about the contact, the person that we're speaking to, the lead, the name that we got, and kind of go from there. And then ultimately what you're trying to find out, once you have a, a good understanding of the account and the contact, the thing that's missing is, is the need. Is there any need that they would have my um, services solved for their business? Is there any need that I could possibly create? And so as you see us go through, what we'll do is kind of define each one of these and we'll spend time and go through each one of these one by one by one. But then we'll also talk about how you can leverage this into your day to day, meaning how do you make it conversational? How do you make it work? How do you make it flow? And, you know, Tom said that we'll give you that tool at the end, which isn't just your top kind of five qualifying questions, but also how do you make it seem natural and seem like it's a good flow? And, and how can you bring this into the day-to-day -day of what you go out there and try to drive towards? And so if you haven't thought about qualification um, at the level of the account and the contact and the need, I'll say work with us for a bit. Let's maybe expand some of the thinking or how you thought about it. Maybe look at it a different perspective and see if it gives you a little bit more to resonate with and a little bit more to dive deeper with. And then we'll hit those different uh, pieces of the puzzle. All right, so the first thing we'll do, do you want to do this, Robert, or you want me to do it? You know, I can, uh, I can jump in if you'd like, Scott. So, right. yeah, so we've got a polling question up in front of everyone. I uh, would ask at this point in time if you could make sure that you just click in, give us your answer as it relates to when you're qualifying opportunities, what are you trying to qualify? Uh, you'll see some perspective there in the categories that Scott was just mentioning on the contact versus the company versus the need or or maybe a little bit of everything. So if you could maybe just bring us, uh, kind of let us know what you're looking to do and we will uh, give that just a moment to breathe. Scott, any thoughts as we uh, think about 
people and, and, and businesses and what they're trying to qualify. Is there something that maybe pops to mind that from a perspective yes. of, hey, this is what I always want to know? Yeah, so the way we set up this polling question is to kind of see how you guys kind of kind of rank it and see what you do. And so there's not a right or wrong answer. Um, it's just trying to make sure and, you know, really try to get a sense of really, what are you, what are you doing right now? Um, and hopefully we didn't persuade you too much in the intro slide where you all go all the above, but we want to kind of get some of the realism of what you guys are, are dealing with today and make sure it's, it's precise and, and driven from there. Awesome. So we've had this going for a little over a minute, Scott, and uh, you'll be uh, pretty, pretty happy to know that we've got 86% of the folks saying all of the above. They'll take it all, want to know it all. 10% uh, on the need and 5% focusing on the company. Okay. Yeah, it's funny because when we were talking about this beforehand and Tom and I were, were developing stuff, we, I think we both figured that the contact would probably be the very lowest. Um, and not, not that uh, surprising. Um, okay, so cool. So then we actually have another kind of polling question that kind of is similar, but a little bit different. Robert? Yeah, and so, you know, as, as Scott said, this feels a little similarly, and, you know, everyone said, hey, I'm trying to nail it all down. So when you're trying to nail it all down, when you're looking at the context and the company versus the need, we're curious as to where do you feel like you're the weakest? And cultivating this information. You know, maybe you've got a really strong set of criteria or a toolkit on understanding what the company need is or what the overall need is, but just let us know, you know, think about this. Where do you think you could use the most help in cultivating this type of information from your prospects and maybe even from your clients too, depending upon what the conversation's like. And Scott, as uh, this is kind of coming up on a minute or so of uh, being up on the screen in front of our audience, it's as much more evenly dispersed. Um, we've got 25% of the folks saying they need a little bit of help across the board uh, with a little bit more heavily focused, close to 40% um, on the need and why, they, why clients may need the IT services of our folks today. Okay, cool, cool. All right, great. Well, so thank you all for doing that. That's, that's uh, fantastic. We appreciate that. So what we'll do is we'll kind of get into each one of these, these different pieces. And so like you see here, it's the account level. So it's the company level. And again, what we'll, we'll get into in a future session is more deep discovery, as I like to call it, questions, where you get much more in depth. Again, the point of qualification is how do I quickly qualify this as an as a, um, account or a person that I want to go out there and, and invest some time, effort, uh, and focus on to try to get uh, business. Right. So with that in mind and thinking about how we frame the qualification piece at the account level, obviously you're going to ask some high level items about, you know, what their company is, where they're located, how many locations that they have and all that, I think kind of, kind of makes sense. You probably ask them and maybe what they do and kind of understand some of the nuances. And this is where for MSPs that have industry specific uh, clients or are focused more on specific industries where you can start to bring out your your industry specifics um, and how you can drive that. But then ultimately, I think what we're trying to see from an MSP is, is it worth my time? Is it worth my effort? Or how much time or how much effort should I invest, right, is really kind of getting a sense of not just the employees, but really how many computers they have. You could work in, a, in an environment, I know Tom has a, a bunch of stories, where um, you know, there might be a huge employee count, but doesn't mean there's a lot of IT support focus or hardware or software needs that might be there um, to drive that. So the question in the middle about how many computers that you have, and even that last question of, you know, how do you currently handle your IT needs, or who do you use today to handle your current needs? And some people add, you know, a couple extra words to it. They might say, if we're talking about onboarding, or they might say, how do you handle your IT needs for bringing in new people and setting them up uh, for general ticket and support? They might even ask more specifics about a certain type of IT solution. And that's okay qualification too. So you wanna give the, the, the framework here that you can definitely go out and add um, a flare or two or a question or a word or two at the end that really kind of matches more to what you do and how you go out there and do it. Uh, Tom, do you want to kind of share a story? No, we'll go back to the, the, uh, the account level. Yeah, um, and 
this is this is kind of where I like to focus in very early. Is this someone who I should even be talking to? And uh, kind of what Scott alluded to is you'll be talking to someone and they'll be in a company with 150 people, which you find out it's a construction company. And so only 20 people are actually use computers. So you might originally think, hey, I don't really handle business on that side, but ask a couple questions deeper and get into how many actual endpoints they have that can be managed. So you can actually start qualifying or disqualifying early on just with that basic information. And Tom, when we're talking about these qualifications, um, are, are we looking at this from an on-site visit, or is this more kind of, a, hey, picking up the phone, just following up on a referral, just following up in other ways? I don't, you know, MSPs have such a large market they work, they work into because there's so many verticals. I don't want to spend my time doing on-sites to find out that I could have found out this was not a fit before I went, or if it was a fit, you know, I'd want to know that because I might want to bring additional resources in with me other people in my company or certain things about that vertical. So I like to answer that. I like to give the answer to these questions in an early on conversation, either in person or on the phone, even when I meet the person if possible. Yeah, excellent. Again, the, the intent too is on that qualification is do I want to invest the time, money, resources, effort to go after this, this customer? Um, and it's easy to say, I'll take any business, uh, but you also want to make sure you get the right business for you that gives you the right type of return. Uh, maximizes the you know the the offerings that you could go out there and do and the resource you provide and ultimately that speaks to to the bottom line how much money you can make as an MSP, right? Excellent, cool. So yeah, so if we're looking now, we're going to transition off of the account and focus more on the contact level. So this is the person, right? The it, it's the contact, it's the person that you're dealing with, it's the name that you were given, it's the person that you met in the elevator, et cetera, et cetera. Right, so first, obviously, starting to understand uh, what their role is. I think probably that's that's maybe kind of the obvious one that's there, kind of what they do, but it's hopefully beyond title, right? But in, from, in terms of, you know, what's their role and really what is their responsibility for, I said kind of here, coordinating technical services, right? So you heard me say a couple of examples previously you know, are you the one who is responsible for setting up, you know, all the new hardware and, and for new employees, or do you set up the, the equipment and install the software for not just your employees, but also to run the business and kind of get a, an understanding of this, of the scope, because we all know it's not just setting things up, but there's security needs. There's all these other different types of nuances to run, run the business from an IT infrastructure, right? So getting a better sense of kind of what their role is, and then understanding their role will also help you kind of in the next kind of piece of really being able to pinpoint the needs that that person has. Because whenever you ask a need question, it really is of the person that you're asking, how they perceive it and how they perceive the need. Some people might be good at explaining the overall company need and those pieces, but a lot of uh, times, you know, whether it's, you know, 30, 40, 70% of the time, People think of it, what's, what's impacting them. So understanding their role and how they play those things out, I find to be a very critical piece. Uh, third question there, so when new people join the company and new systems, is that your job? Again, it's a diff different flair of how to ask uh, the question as well as the last question. It's kind of a who handles that type of a question. Um, and every company might have different needs, whether they're regulatory, or legal or different compliance aspects. So obviously the easy one is to say like medical with HIPAA, right? So any type of medical company, you might say, hey, and if you work with medical companies, you know, with regards to understanding HIPAA compliance and how it relates and involves technology, hardware and software, are you the person that rehandles that, right? So being able to take those different pieces and nuances, especially if you know the industry or you know certain requirements, how you can drill into that to see the different levels of responsibilities that people have. And this is something that, you know, as MSPs um, grow, you know, some of you might have different uh, people at your, at your MSP that might handle different functions. So just be cognizant of the questions that you ask, you might have different people that would ask these differently to different end users and different clients that you're going after. Tom, anything you wanted to add? <clears throat> yeah, this is a point where 
talking to the contact, and I want to know exactly what they do for a couple of reasons. Do they have the knowledge of, of what needs to happen from an IT perspective in their firm? And do they have some kind of responsibility, decision-making power? And will they be, or will they be able to put me in touch with the right people? But in particular, talking about regulatory, legal, and compliance, this is where I really like to know, is this someone I can help or is it not? Because I've decided there's going to be certain, there's certain industries I work within. And also, I can make this conversation more about them than it is about me and my services. Because if you can engage them on that level, and now they're talking to you as, you know, Tom, you, you asked about regulatory and compliance related items. Well, you know what? We do. We are part of our work as a consulting company is we do, we're a government contractor. And, you know, we have to, we have to handle data in a certain way. And it has to be stored in a certain way. And there's something about encryption. Now I'd be, that, that's their story to me, and now I can engage them and say, hey, you know what? I've actually got a really strong strength in that area, and I think we can help you for this reason. But I've allowed them to voice that and put that out there, and it really engages that potential prospect in a conversation about them and their needs. Cool. Yeah, so at the beginning, on the first polling question, you know, we asked all of you, you know, what are you trying to go out there and accomplish? And I don't think we had anyone say kind of their contact and their role. So hopefully there is you know a little tidbit here and there uh, that you kind of took away. I love how Tom kind of bookended it with regard to making sure he can really relate to that person, understand their environment, their needs, their focus, and what drives them, you know, their motivation, if you will, and being able to really understand that I think is is critical and important. Uh, did any questions come up with that at all, Robert? Being that this is something that. Uh, you know, actually, we did get a question from Phyllis come in. Um, I think maybe it was, I don't know if it's better for Tom or yourself, but, you know, understanding as it relates to people specifically um, and their responsibilities and whether they have the true knowledge of their IT needs, how, how can, how's the best place to where if they, somebody may think they know, but how can our audience and, and, and the MSP audience really get under the fact of, hey, do you know what your IT needs really are? So I think that's more of a of a need question, which we'll probably go into a second. So maybe I would say, give us a second, Phyllis, and, and we'll we'll hit that. But I think if we talk about um, the contact and understanding, I think their role within those needs. So again, you don't have to ask these in in order of let's start with the account, then the contact, then the need, ebb and flow as you all need to. Uh, but understanding the person as it relates to the different needs or the different potential needs if you're trying to fish for opportunities um, are there, I think is really kind of the, the critical piece that's there. But maybe with that, what maybe we should do um, is transition to the, the need level. And this is where obviously a bunch of you chimed in of, yeah, this is where you kind of are maybe more the weakest and kind of go from there. And I think you even heard a little bit more of Phil's question. So when we talk about the need, and. <laughs> And again, let's frame what this is. This is the initial qualifying question to see if it's worth taking to the next step. And we'll talk about after we go through this, you know, the slide, how do we make it kind of an, an engagement style conversation and how do we go from there? But just what are the, the maybe one, two, three key questions that we'd want to start to ask to really understand the needs that this person has to know if I should go out there and invest time and if there's an opportunity for us to kind of continue this to move forward. Right, so here's a couple different questions that you can kind of pull off of and kind of use. So we'll just go through them bit by bit. So what challenges are you facing with technical activities from onboarding new employees, managing your company's data, maintaining a secure IT environment, and managing your, all your technical assets? So as you can see, Tom and I kind of threw four different types of pieces here with regards to what we labeled as technical activities. If those aren't your focus, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, add in the things that you think more more applicable for you. But if that's if these are things that you work on and do, then great. Go ahead and, and, and leverage that. Next question there is, are there any problems or areas you can improve upon that you're currently experiencing with your IT systems? Right? So if you like to focus on the client's pain and how you can solve that pain, you'll use the word problems. If you like to be more, more positive, uh, you might say, are there any areas for improvement, right? So it's not necessarily as, uh, as direct as saying the problem. Uh, but you might say, hey, you might have certain things going well. Is there any areas that we could improve upon and kind of go from there? 
Um, so de definitely a, a way to kind of get to the specifics relatively quick. Um, and then if you want to look at maybe some future scopes and kind of get more specifics, the next question is any technology improvements that you're looking at to make over the next maybe three, four, five, six months. Uh, the fourth question there, are, are you currently under contract with a, with a business that provides IT services for you? Right, so that's getting real blunt and just saying, hey, do you have someone that goes out there and, and does that, right? And I think that's obviously a, a, a really good question from a qualification to know where, where they're at and what they're going out there and doing. And so I've seen some people leverage this. They might start with that, are you currently under contract with someone? Well, great, do they handle all of the technical activities from setting up new employees, managing your data, you know, managing a secure IT environment, and also any technical assets that you're dealing with? Right, so they might actually go out there and go into this, you know, the first question, or they might even piggy into the, the last question. If you have industry specifics, right, and what you're able to go out there and do, you might be able to parlay that, that maybe their current IT provider doesn't understand, right? So what industry are you working in? Are there particular technical or business processes that, that you have? If you know the industry well, you should leverage that to its you know full extent, and maybe it would change it around the question a bit instead of saying what you know what particular you know processes do you have or need, you might change it around. I know that you need this. How are you able to solve for X, Y, and Z? Right? How are you able to keep up with X, Y, and Z? If you know those industry specifics, and that kind of goes back to the regulatory or industry or compliance uh, items that we spoke about briefly. That's really where you can go out there and leverage it and see if their current IT supplier is that in tune with the industry and what they need. Tom, did I hear you want to kind of chime in a little bit? Yeah, I've just got a, a couple of these. I'd like to hit the first, the second one. Something I'd really like to do that I would say probably got me a lot of contracts. I'd be sitting in a networking event and I'd be talking to someone and I figured out that they were some kind of decision maker for IT. So I've established what their role is. And probably often an owner or an office manager, someone like that. And I try to I try to get out of them just one IT problem they're having. Maybe they've got so like a network printer that's not working, that the other IT company or IT guy hasn't been able to fix, or a particular program, or they're in a vertical. Like I was heavy in legal, and I hear they had a problem with pro law or time slips or something like that. And we had people that were certified in that. So I would jump onto it and I say, Hey, listen, you know that problem you mentioned. I'd ask them about it. They'd give me the problem. I'd let them go on with their conversation. And, hey, that problem you mentioned, you know, that printer that just never seems to work or that one computer keeps disconnecting. And I say, you know what? I've got a tech I could send over for a couple hours at no charge on Friday. What do you say? It's not going to cost you anything. And I would draw them in that way, and then I'd send them and do some free work and turn that into an account almost always because I've pre-qualified them here. I'm going to take it to the next level very quickly. The other one I'd like to talk about in here is – Asking them about technology improvements. So kind of digging deep with them. Not only technology improvements, but what do they want to do? Oftentimes, they've been talking to other businesses within their vertical, like it's an accounting firm. And maybe they have a whole advanced version of QuickBooks, and they, they want it networked in a certain way or backed up in a certain way, but they don't have that. Try to really understand their need across their vertical and dig in deep. Find out something that they tell you that they want to get done. So maybe it's not even like, a technology improvement they're thinking of, but like somewhere they'd like to be or some capability or ask them if they're going to be adding employees soon. I worked with a lot of government contractors that would go up and down in numbers. And just one more on that vertical thing. If you have a particular knowledge in vertical certifications and someone says they're a law firm or accounting firm or this, that, then jump into it. Go, go right into it. You have specific knowledge about that vertical and tell them, tell them why you're an expert. Qualify yourself. Hey, and guys, got a question that has come in from David um, on these needs perspectives. So thanks, David, for, uh, for the questions. And he's wondering, how do you pick interest when the company you're speaking to already has another provider for IT services? What's the key argument to be able to interest the contact level to see what the differences are? So it's kind of that competitive thing. So it's not only about looking at your issues, but they've got a competitor. You've got a competitor that you're dealing with. So David wants to know how best to kind of explore needs when they're already working with an IT service provider. Uh, that is a good point right there. And Scott kind of hit on that. I want to know at this point, are they under a contract and are they happy or not? Because 
if they're under a contract and they're happy, then then shelve it. I mean, it's you know, I, I don't try to sell in that situation. There's too many others I can talk to. If they're under a contract and they're unhappy, maybe. But I like to establish that first. I don't I don't spend a lot of time when I ran my MSP competing against other MSPs. It's not interesting to me. I never entered situations where I was bidding against three or four others. And if there was an incumbent, I often knew that person. And as, as pretty many people out there, there's a healthy respect for other MSP owners. I try not to tread on their turf. If there was a problem even that I detected from the conversation, I'd probably, I usually reach out to that owner and say, hey, listen, I think this is going on over there. And you know what happens? They'll send you business later on. Scott, any, any thoughts from you, sir? Well, there's a couple of different things I think we'll, we'll talk about later of how you can try to uh, still explore the, the environment. Uh, i not trying to take away exactly what Tom said. If they're under contract and happy, you know, great. You know, here, here's my information. If you ever need a second opinion, try to find out when their uh, contract comes to an end and start doing the reach out to them three months beforehand type of a thing, right? Um, but if they aren't happy or they aren't under contract, right, then, um, you know, you definitely want to see what you can do. If they are under contract, you also could probably say that they handle everything, or is there certain nuances where maybe you think that might be out of it, right? And so whether it's from, and there might be certain uh, capabilities or features that you do more, or again, like we said, from an industry perspective, under, understand industries better. But I think there's ways you could probably, um, if it's full soup to nuts, that they handle everything great. But if it's not, maybe there's an opportunity for you to go out there and do a quick, um, you know, let us come out there and do some some uh, free network eval type of thing. And that's one of the examples we'll talk about later. So, Okay. Hey, got more. another question here, I think. Um, thank you, Scott. Got another question here from Hank. Um, seems like a lot of discovery questions here. Are, should we also be selling during this part of the process? Ooh, that's a good one. I'll take that first time, yeah, and then why don't, you, why don't you chime in after? Um, so I always believe, and we've we've had sessions in the past. Like we said, this is the fourth kind of sales focused session for MSPs. We've already talked about elevator pitches, and when we talked about elevator pitches, we also talked about it in the, in the sense of value propositions. I'm always a firm advocate of dropping in value prop of what we do. And so, especially if you have industry expertise or if you have certain technology expertise of certain types of tech, uh, technology domains, uh, hardware or specific software that you do or, or whatever the case may be. So, for example, Tom mentioned the legal space, and there's a very common tool that I think 30% of small law firms use that's called ProLaw that he mentioned, right? And so... You, you know, Tom could very, very much go out there and highlight as a value add, hey, I'm really familiar with regards to how law firms work and the different intricacies and have certifications with regards to supporting pro law. And I've been working with an application for multiple years. With that said, let me ask you, right? So it's a way to put that value add that's there in a way that makes um, sense in the context and also helps position you better than anybody else to help support that need better than anyone else. Tom? Yes. One thing is <clears throat> I wouldn't try to sell too much at this stage. You're in a networking event or your first call with someone from a referral. I do that stuff in person after I have more of the information. There's a couple reasons here too. There might be an incumbent or in, in which case they're just looking to change service providers. Or sometimes I've even had kind of people kind of dig in and they want to get information from me and you can end up kind of giving your solution away at this point because you're selling too hard at the point you really should just be qualifying. And instead focus on, we handle, we handle the type of client you are. Tell us more about you and your needs and not giving them all the answers because the answer is going to come when you bring them a network contract and a complete plan on how you're going to run them. And this is not the point for that. And, and Tom, uh, I'd like to interject as well. We had a question earlier from David. Um, we actually had, had a, another David come in. We'll call him David G. And I think he's providing some feedback here around this c competitive perspective and whatnot. And I think uh, what David G is recommending is understand the difference maybe between what your competition is doing, if any, right? Is it CIO tech help, very focused on the improvement of the infrastructure, or is it looking at the business process? And if you as an MSP think you may have some value to add at the business process level and improve their business, 
And then maybe that's a, an avenue to explore with them to, to get under those needs a little bit deeper. So David G, thanks so much for that input. I just like to throw in there that here's something I spent a lot of time on. Um, it's a funny thing is I started my MSP. It was very small, just myself and then added employees over the years. And then I ended up at a point where I actually had a, a significantly larger business than a lot of the clients that I was supporting. And at that point, I started becoming much more than just an MSP. I was providing, you know, a lot, a lot of business process reengineering type things because I would come in and say, hey, listen, let's not only talk about this in your business, the technology, but let's talk about integrates to your entire structure. And this is something you could bring in and qualify. If you just, if you find out it's not just a technology need, but a business need, and you have a knowledge in that, make sure they know that too, and have them talk about their business needs overall, not just their tech, because you don't want to just be their computer guy. You want to be more than that to them, and you can set the stage for that during qualifying. Excellent. Uh, you know, guys, I know we've spent a lot on this topic around needs and understandable. I think it was, uh, you know, one of our more popular responses early on. Scott, are, is there any other points you want to point out uh, here before we move on? I think we've hit it, hit it pretty strong. Okay. Wonderful. So, as we kind of you know, look through these different items. I know that Tom kind of put together how he can kind of make what he calls qualification work. So there's a couple of different pieces here. I know that Tom kind of wanted us to break through from his experience. Yeah, I want to talk to these. One thing is, is that this is kind of at the point where generally I've gotten a referral. So most of my business came in from referrals and networking events, and I did have full-time sales. But these guys I, kind of bring me everything or I'd have, I had pretty well-trained clients out there in terms of giving me referrals. Before I make a phone call or if I can get a hold of a list of who's attending an event, um, especially in like meetup, those kind of events, very easy, you can see who's coming. Or, um, you know, someone who gave me the lead or someone who might know the person, like I go on their LinkedIn and I see who, who they're connected to, I connect to them. And then if it's someone I know, I can reach out. I want to gather information before I go out there to pre-screen them and kind of pre-qualify them in a way and understand what their business is and their needs and kind of understand already, is it a fit or not? Because my big thing is, is an MSP, and I mentioned this earlier, there are so many different businesses that I, that I can cater to and handle their IT. I, I want to kind of bring it down to just the ones I'm most comfortable with because I've decided what the ones that I actually make money with and work the best with. So whenever I can, I want to do some pre-screening. And this is kind of the kind of the mantra I went by, and I would teach my salespeople this too. I would always be eliminating. Like I said, there's such a large market out there you could work for, and you've got to decide what works well for you, what size, what verticals, what geographic area, and kind of their corporate culture even. That's become a big thing too. Are they people you can work with? Or do they have a reputation of people that, that, that you don't want to work with? And so I would I would try to make sure I would I would ask questions around trying to find out is this is this someone who I, the person I shouldn't be talking to or is this some a company I don't even want to deal with so I would try to focus in on mainly here um, can I get access to the right people you'll have some people you know like no matter what you do you can never get in front of the owner and you've decided that if it's this kind of business you need to deal with the owner so if you can't do it or the owner's remote that could be a problem and also talking about their IT needs you'll find some that have these IT needs that it's it much more at an enterprise level because you're talking to someone who came from enterprise and now they're working in small business and just what they think that they can do can't be done for the money or isn't even possible or it's a completely different solution so making sure they're very reasonable and it aligns with what you can provide and then you know are these people that you can reach a mutual agreement with are they gonna are they someone who could potentially sign a contract with you and stay on long term or are they people who want to kick the tires? Stay away from them. If they want to kick the tires and try things out with you, I wouldn't do it. I might throw them a few free hours and do a free network eval, but anything beyond that, I want a contract. And if it's not someone that has ever signed a contract and doesn't do it with other businesses, might not be a fit. And then understanding, kind of touched us already, IT costs. Are there IT costs? Are they willing to spend money on technology or have they always kind of gone too cheap on it? And then the questions. I, I always focused on only asking questions I didn't already have the answers to. And so if you have a list, I had like a, a qualification list of questions I would run through, and it was part, part of my free network eval. Um, if I already knew the answers to those questions, I, I just skip them. 
Sometimes people get stuck in this list and they feel they need to ask every single one. Focus on what's going to establish whether or not they're a good client, potential client for you. And also, if they are in a vertical, if it's a vertical you know, have, have some jotted down vertical questions already. If it's not a vertical you know and it's one you want to work in, like you want to work in medical, do some research. There are managed service provider companies out there that specialize in medical. You can go right to their site and find out why they're specialists. You know, Tom, we've, we've on that particular uh, point, uh, we've had another question come in from Mike, so thanks, Mike. Do you recommend further asking, this kind of goes back to our competitive perspective, but if we found out that they're working with, a, with an IT provider already, do you recommend further asking a prospect if their current provider specializes in the company's business or industry? The first thing I want to find out is, are, and that's a good point, are they under contract? Are they happy with those services? Get an answer to that and then lead into, you know, whether or not they're happy with it, do they find that their provider has a specialty in that particular vertical they're operating in, and kind of dig into that and, and understand if they don't, if they do and they're happy with it, I kind of move on from that point. There's just too many to talk to. If they're not, try to find out specifically what within that vertical, what is a, a pain point, and focus in on that and get as much detail as possible. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. So, <clears throat> So we've talked about all the various pieces that we're trying to qualify from the business to the people to the needs of the business as a whole. We've talked about now these tips on making qualification work. Scott, can you talk to us a little bit at this point about the, the conversational side of the qualification process? We've talked about a lot of questions, a lot of lists. How do we make this feel natural? Yeah, so that, that's the right word there is, you know, feel natural or phrase, I should say. So. I think what, what Tom and I want to make sure is clear is, you know, you're not overly selling, you're not doing all these different things, but you want to have that conversation, right? And so a lot of times when um, I see people focus in on questions, whether it's the high level qualification questions we're referring to today, or deeper discovery questions when you really are in the account and trying to, you know, get, get more detail. They just go question, 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 question. And you gotta make it conversational, right? You wanna make sure that you're in, dial in good dialogue with the person that you're speaking to. And so here's just a couple of different types of uh, kind of uh, conversational uh, items. You actually heard me you know, say, so let me ask you earlier when I kind of gave the example. I like doing those types of, of items. And it also works great too for, with a little bit of things like the value add that you do. Um, and the value that you that you do bring, like we talked about from the value prop and elevator pitch piece, right? Um, and that's obviously the last um, bullet here. But being engaged and driving that, it's, it's really how your style works. Uh, I'm a very energetic, personal person. So for me, I might say, you know, I love hearing about local businesses and kind of what makes them tick. You know, I understand that you do X, Y, and Z, but can you tell me how? Right? Or can you tell me who or what's involved? And you just kind of go into some of those different questions. But by me kind of expressing that interest and them seeing it in my, my face or hearing it on my, on my voice, um, it tends to really drive good engagement. Right? And then when you're engaged, it's easy to ask another question or two and kind of go from there and drive those different pieces out. So there's a few different ones here. Feel free to, you know, obviously use your own style. Um, and you know, your own uh, kind of process and in, in terms of how you want to go there and do it. But we didn't want to avoid the fact that it's not question, 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 question. It's not that we expect people to go out there and ask 15 different questions, five on account, five on contact, five on need. We want you to have the framework to use, give you a couple of different specifics, and then figure out a way to make it in a way that, that drives a good fluid conversation. So in a good five, 10 minute conversation that you are able to qualify those three areas that we've gone through, how do you do it in a way that just seems like it flows and feels natural, all right? Um, and so a lot of times I like to even use the first one that's out there too, the first bullet. You know, I'll just use you as an example here, Robert. You know, Robert, I, you know, I'd hate to go off on different tangents. I'd like to make sure I give information to you that's really relevant for what you do and how you ask it. So let me just ask you a question or two on, and it lets me kind of, you know, go into the specifics and they know the reason why it's a value for them to answer uh, that question. And the more I can kind of give the reasoning why and the value, the more kind of conversation you get back and forth from, um, from the clients you're speaking with. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I think Scott, that's an excellent point. And you know, you you, you draw. I think you used the term personal a moment ago, and. And, and I'd go so far as to say, you know, I think our audience and, and MSPs in general need to try to bring a certain amount of empathy uh, to the clients and prospects that they're dealing with, because as the more that they know that you understand their issues, I think the more opportunities are going to surface. Um, but personal empathy, it's, that's definitely a key, I think, to the conversational piece of this equation. Yeah, I can just speak just for a second. Go ahead, Tom. I would just say um, my thing is, is just start building that business relationship and that the kind of connection with the person in the company early on. My thing is to get them to talk. I want to make sure they're talking more than me. And that's where you really need the information, especially the pain points. The more they talk, the more likely they are to give you something that you can grasp onto that's going to establish whether or not there is a business you want to work with and do they have a specific pain point that you can focus in on to get this give this deal. Awesome. Yeah, kind of on, on, that, on that point, right, then you, what you're really trying to do with this is – how do you then take this conversation and really kind of take it to the next step, right? And so what we really want you to do from a qualif you know, from qualification, once you found it to be qualified, meaning it is worth your time, it is worth your money, it is worth your effort, right? It is <laughs> worth your resources to invest, right? Then how do you take it to that next step? Uh, you know, piece of the, of the equation, right? So we'll go into kind of what a discovery call is and how to get things more in depth and really kind of hit what Tom just spoke to last. So really understanding the pain points that are there. So right now we scratched the surface, heard, heard a couple of high level pain points, right? At this point in time, you can go right into that kind of uh, what I call a discovery call. And I don't mean it as a phone call, I mean as a, as a discussion, right? Uh, whether it's on the phone, face to face, however that works. Right, and so how you can kind of go um, and go out there and do it, and there's a couple of different kind of ways you can you can bring it up here. So if I can continue for a little bit longer and go right into it, um, I'm personally not the type that asks for um, a whole extra time if you're engaging and having a good conversation. Uh, then they're going to want to keep going with it, and they'll they'll manage their own time. If I get a little bit so wishy-washy, then I might just ask, hey. You know, is it okay if we have a couple of minutes to like to, right, continue on? You can, you can kind of go from there. Um, and then the other, you know, little item that we have is, you know, what might make sense is for us to spend a little bit more time so I can really make your business place you get care for a fit, right? And that's making sure that you understand that it's not just can you help them, but is it going to be the right fit for you as well? If you, uh, the next piece about taking a qualified, yeah, you can bring that up, please, Sam. Be great. Perfect. And then we wanted to give you the right type of what I call engagement questions, right? And more specifically for that meeting. And if things are going well, that meeting might just transition right there in that same conversation. It might be something that you have to go out there and, and, and set up. All right, there's a few different ways of how you can go out there and try to drive this, right? So it might be, hey, based on some of the things that we talked about, I'd love to send a technician out, you know, next Tuesday. Um, we have some, I have some open time or he'll be in your area. I don't mind having him drop by for a little bit to take a look at that problem that you mentioned. Maybe we can see if we can go out there and fix it. I'll tell you what, this is on me, right? Or maybe just start asking, are you available at this, at this date and time, right? I'd like to come by and have you know, a good discussion with you, or I'd like to go out there and do an IT evaluation for you. If you feel doing the offer, and we've talked about promotions and how to leverage promotions um, as well in a previous MSP Ignition, so I'm trying not to be too redundant here. Uh, but that's where you can go out there and really leverage that. And when Tom and I were talking about today, you know, he really leveraged the you know, an IT evaluation, going out there and kind of looking at their environment, not investing too much time, money, or resources. But when you do an evaluation, by default, that means you get to ask a lot of different questions and really see what's under the hood. And then you can see how you can go out there and, and try to help. Uh, sometimes you might be at trade shows. You might just be in passing. Hey, do you have a card? Can we set up time to go out there and, and, uh, and have a call? Right. And then if you um, have any type of specialization that we've talked about, it's great to kind of finish with a question that will help drive that, right? So I thought about having an IT service provider that really specializes 
in small, you know, small business IT needs, or if you're in the medical space or you're in the legal space, et cetera, et cetera, right, to really handle your, your medical IT needs. Um, and those different specifics that can really help try to take that qualified lead and engage it in a way where you can then set up a meeting to get the business. Because that's ultimately what we're trying to go out there and help you guys with is how do you get more opportunities that you can go out there and increase your business. Anything you wanted to add here, Tom? Yeah, I like the idea too. And this is something that, that Scott put in here was go directly into a discovery call. And we are going to cover this in another MSP Ignition, but I do like to do this. I mean, if I'm on that first call with someone and I'm qualifying them and I realize this is this is a possible fit, then then I'm gonna I'm gonna dig right in. I would ask people on things like this if you can record the call. Because if they start talking, you're probably not gonna get it all in your notes. Make a recording of it. Have that to look back later on, use it for training within your organization also. But also I want to talk about too, is that try to get that free eval in person. Don't make it too long, make it one hour, try to give it to them, it's free. And also I advertise to them, I'm gonna do a free eval for you. It's gonna be a few pages long of, of what I'm gonna cover. And it's basically gonna tell you where your network is. You don't have to give me all the access, but I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown of what you have right now, where your technology is. And I'm gonna give you a copy of it later on, so matter, no matter what you do with my company or another one, because now you're giving them something. And if you give them something, they're much more likely to give take some to to take more from you or want to buy something from you. All right. Uh, um so guys, I think we've got just a, a few more things we need to cover here in the in, as we move into the, the home stretch, if you will. Scott, just a heads up, um, by the way, I think we sent you a note, but you're coming in a little choppy. I uh, definitely had some clear points there. So I'm not sure if you have a window close by, but um as we think about you know, again, the culmination of this conversation, we want to make sure that the audience has something to help guide you. We've talked about a lot of information here, um, all the way down from the account to the contact, down to the needs level. And, and we know that there's a lot of information that we've shared. We want to make it easily accessible for you. So, Scott, if, if you'd be kind enough maybe to walk us uh, through what we're looking at here, which can also be downloaded from, with, uh, from our audience at the uh, GoToWebinar panel on your screens. Sure, and hopefully this sounds better from a phone perspective. Uh, Sounding so very strong. Thank looking, you, sir. Yep. So from a qualification perspective, here's just a little cheat sheet we just wanted to give you so you had a takeaway. You could feel free to use this and leverage this as you see fit. But we have top five qualifying questions. Uh, these are ones that, you know, really kind of Tom selected from, from the ones that we had before. And you can see that they range across the account, the contact, and the need levels. So you can you can kind of go from there. You got the conversational sayings, and then also kind of taking that qualifying leads and even giving the idea of how do you get on site and the idea of, of a network eval. So it's just something that we want you all to be able to walk away from every single one of these MSP Ignitions trainings and be able to do something different on your very next opportunity or your very next call or your very next engagement. We want to arm you so that you can take these um, – skills, these concepts, and these tactics, and leverage it almost instantaneously. It also could be something that you could go out there and use with your team if you have other people um, that are quote-unquote salespeople or not. I, I uh, know I said this on past uh, sessions. I think everyone is a salesperson. Whether they have a commission plan or not is a different story. But imagine anyone that is customer-facing being able to go out there and ask maybe some qualifying questions or be able to try to figure out ways to go out there and drum up new business and or increase business from a current clientele. And how we can go out there and do that is really by asking questions and uncovering need. And so we just want to give you a good little cheat sheet so that you could go out there and have that and be familiar with those different nuances. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to thank Scott, um, and at this point, we're launching our last polling question, so I uh, appreciate everyone hanging on the line with us, going through all this wonderful information. Um, just want to understand kind of what you're going to take away from today's session. Uh, you will notice that there's a slight uh, addition, so there's the account, contact, and needs if you're going to work on those, or you're going to work on the conversational aspects of your qualification engagements. Um, Tom, Scott, any thoughts as it relates to the uh, answers are coming in for, from our audience here? Yeah, I guess this is just a, a way for a little bit more uh, for us, but more for you. 
Um, if we're going to give you good tools and we brought some different things, we just want to make sure we help you more with a kind of an action planning. Um, and then it kind of also helps us see from the, the answers you gave us earlier to the ones now, just um, are we hitting the mark? Are we sparking some ideas? And normally when we ask these questions at the end, we get a good sense if we've kind of sparked some fresh concepts and ideas with you. And normally we've, we've been pretty good, but this is just our way to also validate it. Awesome. And you know what, Scott, I think, uh, thank you for that overview. I think that wh what we're seeing right now coming out, I think we are having some impact. Looks like 70% uh, of our audience is going to be working on all of the above. And then, you know, about actually it's 25% uh, looking at m making the qualification process more conversational. I like to speak to that because that's my big thing is, you know, everyone's been in, you know, on the phone or in front of some type of salesperson that it, it's hitting you with boilerplate. And it's just not cool. It, you tune out from it. And make it a conversation about them, understand them as a person. We, we just talked here. We talked all about just business and business questions. But you know what? Prep is a little personal stuff. Find out a little more about them and then work into the business. And then don't stick to just your set questions. Be very fluid so that you're coming off of questions or concerns of them and not just running down a list you have. Make it a conversation that you enjoy and that they leave from it and they enjoy it too and they want to talk to you again. Because if they talk more than you and they give you something – then they're going to want to continue that conversation and you might have a fit. Perfect. Okay. And um, I've, I've got one, another question that's come in from Mike. And I know we're running close to our time here and, and we're, we're going to wrap up here in a moment, but I think it's a really good question. And so Scott, Tom, curious as to your perspectives of how do you handle a prospect that focused on cost while you're going through the qualification process? Can you repeat that again? Sure. Uh, the question is, so, you're, we're, so you're, you're on the phone, you're in front, you know, maybe it's a network meeting, and you're going through the qualification process. How do you handle this person if they're focused all on costs? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you right there, it's probably not going to be a fit for me because I'm not interested in someone that makes their decision or their first point of evalu evaluation of my services are what does it cost because – you know, you could have one that's costing $2,000 a month, another one the same, but you get a very different value. I might try to transition that conversation into one of value. I'm certainly not going to quote numbers or get in deep into it. I might quote them a prepaid hours amount if they want to buy, like prepaid hours, but I'm not going to talk contract costs. I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of it. It, it. To me, it's not the time or place, but it may be a means to, to disqualify someone if that's the only reason, that the, the primary thing they look at. Scott, any, any thoughts from you? Yeah, at a high level, I know we're going to have probably an overcoming objections session here coming up in the next few weeks. Um, when I hear cost, I don't hear it as – I agree with what Tom said. I also like to, to dive a little bit deeper. So when you talk about cost, are you talking about just like initial costs, or are you worried that there's going to be cost behind the scenes? Did something burn you on cost before that I should be aware of? They might not just be looking for the cheapest. They might be having a, an old wound uh, that's that's going out there and trying to, to drive it. Or they might be under certain constraints that might be temporary. So I probably would want to fish a little bit more into that. But I'll just say if someone's bringing up costs, that is still a buying signal. You just have to determine if it's a buying signal you want to accept or not, which is what I heard Tom say. And that will be my short answer for now because we're on our uh, – That's interesting. Here. Yeah, and uh, thanks for, for the additional perspective, Scott. And as we do start to wrap up, um, you know, please, we, we, we can certainly take a few more questions. If, if you've got them, please pop them in. I do want to let um, kind of in, in concert here. First off, thanks, Mike. Appreciate the, uh, the good – I'm sorry. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate the good words. I uh, really appreciated the, today's session. Um, and in response to David and wondering about information, assets, um, the things, the content that we're, we're, we have associated with MSP Ignition, uh, we actually do have them in a very consolidated repository on the efolder.net website, and that link will be provided in the follow-up email uh, that you'll be receiving today, which will have the, the, the um, pardon me, a little tongue-tied, the ability to go listen to the recording, download the content, and, and really get all the materials both from this MSP Ignition and all the ones prior as well. So on that note, uh, Scott, any, any last words for the audience today? No, I just see you see from right here, guys. We're putting all these different things together. We appreciate all your time and uh, look forward to the next session. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for everyone. Um, really enjoying running MSP Ignition and 
working with Scott and Robert on it. And if anyone out there has any suggestions of what you want to see in an upcoming webinar, please do message us. Absolutely. And that will be a good time to, uh, again, reiterate, you can get all the information from past episodes uh, from your email link that you'll be receiving today, as well as keep an eye out for our next one here in a couple of weeks. We'll be focusing on peer groups on the MSP best practices side of the Ignition program. I'll also take a moment to plug another program that we have in place. We've just launched with our Chief Information Security Officer here at eFolder, Joshua Fultz, and we're highlighting security within the MSP space and, and know that that's a big topic as well. So if you want to find out a little bit more about security and how that can impact your business, your solution stacks, et cetera, uh, please keep an eye on for those. But again, uh, Tom, I think next one, in a couple of weeks, we'll be talking with uh, peer groups, focusing on some other things, and then we'll have Scott Kaplan back in about a month. Yeah, um, we're gonna be, the focus is going to be on the value of peer groups. We have a special guest for it. It's going to be great. If you want to know more about peer groups or contribute, please tune in. Oh, wonderful. Well, I think that handles all the questions as well. So, Sam, thanks again for producing a wonderful episode today. Scott, appreciate the time. Tom, you as well. And for all those on the line with us, thank you for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time.